We've talked about two circuits that oscillate. LC circuits oscillate forever. RLC circuits oscillate, but they actually decay due to the resistance. Now we're going to get into more complicated AC circuits, circuits with all the different elements. And you could keep up with the voltage, the oscillating voltage and the oscillating current in each element. But then that's a lot of them to keep up with. and they get out of phase, it gets very complicated. So in AC circuits, Um, we like to study average values study average values to simplify things things what an awful choice of words but rather than keeping up with the oscillations around every component every voltage every current we will just consider the averages. So as our first example, let's just think about a resistor with an oscillating current going through it. We've actually played with something like that before, and here it is. When we were thinking about power generation and how resistance depends on temperature, we did some demos with this little heater. And this is, remember, it's this uh, nichrome wire all coiled around to have a large resistance around this little ceramic um, Holder, and we pretended that it was under DC voltage and DC current, but actually it's plugged into the wall. It's actually under AC. So the current is actually going back and forth, back and forth at about 60 hertz. The voltage is about 115 volts, and I forgot what the current is, whatever we said it was last time, is about right. So the question is, how should we describe this? What kind of average should we use? Well, we could start looking at the different possibilities. Here is the volts. The delta V as a function of time. And if we plot it, it's just going to be some sinusoidal oscillation. And therefore, the average, average is zero. So that doesn't seem like a very good choice. We could plot the current versus time current versus time, along with the voltage oscillates. It spends just as much time going this way as it does going that way. It oscillates around zero. So the average is also zero. So that's another case where the average doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. In fact, from these two, you'd say, well, if the average is zero and the average is zero, maybe we can just conclude nothing happens. And then we're done with AC circuits. That's nice and easy. Well, clearly, though, something happens. When I get close to this, it's very hot. Something is going on. Let's plot the power the power versus time. Now let's see. P, if we do it in terms of current, it's I squared R. And R is a constant, so you've got to square this. Well, this will square and be positive, and the negative parts of I will square and be positive. And if we were to do V, the power is delta V squared over R. Again, you square this, it's all going to be positive. So if we plot the power, um, it will be something like this. It'll be a sinusoid, a squared sinusoid, that's always positive. There are moments where the power is zero. Right? There are, just like there are moments when the current doesn't flow here. The power does hit zero, but it never goes negative. This is my poor chalkmanship here. It's always positive. Okay? The average of the power is also greater than zero. And an average like this is what we need to be calculating, OK? Because we know there really is something generated. The whole thing isn't just making zero. The oscillating current and the oscillated voltage, even though their average is zero, something really does happen. It generates power. The power's average is not zero. So the point of this is simply we have to be careful with what average we use, OK? You don't want to use always just the simplest average that there is, OK? So we could then say, let's just use the Average, if we want to think about currents, current. But we've already ruled that out. The average current is zero. We don't want to use that. Uh, we could use, what about the maximum current? We could use the amplitudes. Yeah, well, the problem with using the amplitudes is it's essentially hardly ever at the maximum value. 
doesn't really represent an average, it represents a peak. So we don't, we don't want to use the maximum. The thing we want to use, which you've probably heard of, is the RMS, the root, root mean square. So the RMS. So defining and using the RMS is the first step towards coming up with a way to write the equations in terms of averages where you can treat them like the DC equations to some extent, not completely like the DC equations. But in a situation where you have sort of the power is uh, I squared R, if you use the RMS for the, the average power and the RMS for the current, you'll be able to still just say the power is I squared R. You won't have to think about all the little oscillations. So let's see how we're going to get it. Well, we would write it then. It would be the I R M S would be, it is literally what it says. It is the root, the square root of the mean, the average, and square. So you square it. You take the instantaneous oscillating value, you square it, that way it's always positive. You take the average of it, and then you want to get back to the original units, so you take the square root. Let's see what it is for a sinusoidally oscillating current, which is what we're essentially, uh, we're always going to have, right? So if I is I max sine omega t, so let's square it. All right, that's I max squared sine squared omega t. All right, let's take the, <coughs> uh, the mean. Well, I max is just uh, a constant value in front of the sine, so the average of I max squared is just I max squared. That's just like a number like four. It doesn't depend on time. The average of sine squared is a half. So if you plot yourself a sine squared or a cosine squared over a complete cycle or over many cycles, uh, you could do the integral to show it's a half. You could geometrically show it's a half. You could stick it in a computer and find that it's a half. But it is numerically equal to a half. So we got the square, we got the mean, now we just need the root. And well, the square of this is 1 over the square root of 2 i max. So for a sinusoidal current, and pretty much everything we're going to do is going to be sinusoidal, the i r m s is just the amplitude of the oscillation times 1 over the square root of 2. Same thing for the voltage. We could have done all this for delta v. The RMS delta V is the maximum delta V times 1 over the square root of 2. So we'll be using lots of RMS currents and voltages as we analyze AC circuits.